Hi all, another amazing game of Leela Chess, ID 10846, playing black against the mighty Stockfish 8. Stockfish 8 was on uh, one core, Leela on a 10846, uh, Leela 10846 was on a GTX 1060 graphics card. So it's a bullet time control this one, 48 seconds plus 0.2 seconds increment per move. So fast and furious. Let's see what happens in this encounter. D4, uh, the book moves here given this position. And we go into the King's Engine Defense. So very interesting battle position to start off with. Black Castles, H3. E5, and you might think uh, this is interesting. Isn't, isn't it possible for white to force matters here? D5 is actually the most popular move. If white wants to be annoying, it doesn't really get that much advantage, this forcing sequence. Rookie eight, uh, it should be okay. The the idea here is, by the way, you can do this, bishop d8 to protect c7. So this shouldn't be that annoying, but white can get a small edge, potentially. White can queen side, this has all been seen before. It's a very well-known line. So anyway, d5 is played. We have a5 trying to potentially get a knight to c5, but without b4 kicking it bishop d3 uh, we have now knight a6 a3 knight d7 white castles f5 and you might think well hold on a sec isn't this taking liberties with the e6 square it turns out here well stockfish played b4 ignoring that if knight g5 trying to pounce into e6 then actually knight a c5 here and if white wants to preserve the bishop then kick and it's not very good for white to do this that pawn is too loose there isn't any big compensation here although this does seem scary on h6 black can actually do this off h6 and have a reasonably good position so b4 was played just ignoring this for the moment and now lila does cover up <laughs> her e6 square rook a2 uh knight f6 Queen b3, f4 is played. Uh, so the, the scene is really ripe for a hack attack. Leela the caveman over this side of the board against being swamped and smashed to bits on the queen side. So c5, this is actually pretty fast action by Stockfish 8 here with this thematic strategic break. Now, you might think, the greedy of you might think d takes. Actually, the idea here is white to play b5 actually and this is really vicious pushing this knight back and then knight takes e5 for example uh, this knight takes e4 is just hopeless d6 check and then smash through with knight takes uh, g6 is absolutely crushing here this is black's been smashed to bits so that's not very advisable <laughs> to try and win this pawn uh, the idea is not this because actually black could end up with a small edge with a tempo on the queen but actually b5 so point of note g5 is played queen c4 and this actually does seem really quite quick to open up that c5 and target some sensitive points king h8 knight b5 rook g8 has leader actually misplayed this because if you look at this position now c takes c takes we've got this knight on a6 We've got a weak point on d6. Why it's ready with the c file. Is this attack enough? And white now also plays bishop b2 with echoes that this bishop could be really useful on this diagonal. Okay, on the other hand, it looks dangerous to try and do something potentially with the g file. But in this position, actually, knight e8 is played, which reinforces d6 and c7 a bit more and also e5 against the potential knight sack. Just in case you were wondering, uh, instead of knight e8 as played, uh, to play g4 here, uh, there's a very, very nasty shock in this position. If g4 is actually played here, which makes this actually impossible to play. Can you see what white plays? If I give you five seconds. Okay, knight takes d6, really nasty, undermining everything. Threatening knight f7, check. If uh, queen takes, then bang, knight takes e5, again threatening knight f7, check. 
And if white say parries with rook f8, then check here. And this is just a wipeout position. You know, black's getting wiped out totally and utterly. So it does make a lot more sense uh, once you once you realize that knight takes d6 and knight e5 is on. Leader's move knight e8. Yeah, it's starting. Yeah, it's looking like a good preliminary move to try and open up the g file later. Knight h2, covering up against g4, h5. It's not just about the g file, it's about squishing as well, a squishing action, which also justifies the delay, the knight e8 relaxed calmness, not just about opening lines, but squishing as well. Bishop e2, and then actually the knight goes back to help us squishing with g4. Knight f3. Knight h7 is played here. On g4, this would really advertise black's pieces, this move g4, quite well because bang, knight takes d6 and the bishop is starting to be advertised here as well as knight f7 check. For example, queen uh, g takes this check winning the queen with no big compensation there after losing the queen. And if queen takes here, Knight takes e5, and that bishop is now liberated. Again, threatening knight f7 check. So king moves. This position just gets really, really nasty uh, for black, Valila. So look at those bishops. Look at the central pawns. This is a fictional scenario where white's just going to have a big advantage here. It's just massive. So Leela wisely avoids that kind of disaster here by not playing uh, g4 button knight h7 so another kind of knight back preparatory move reinforcing e5 again g5 as well uh, we have now knight h2 g4 here now this makes a lot of sense here h takes g is played and the idea is bishop f6 yes this line opening will have concrete consequences uh, in this position. G5 was played. If G takes H5, then Bishop H3 is very dangerous. For example, this position, there's a cute move here. I wonder if you can guess. I'll give you five seconds. Black to play here. Lines, open lines have consequences in chess. Give Tau an open line to the king, and you might as well resign. Rook takes g2 is winning because of queen g8. This is just crashing through with a checkmate. That's just desperate. It's crashing through with a checkmate. Uh, and also, a cute line here, by the way, is uh, on king h1. Then rook takes h2, knight g5. This is really just winning for black as well. Absolutely winning. Uh, yeah, this this the king's not going to survive that. So g5 was played, not allowing all this stuff with g2. But still, black's opened up the g file very advantageously, it seems now. Knight f3, the, the rook drops back, so that's holding against c7 as well in some lines. King h1. Uh, here, you might think, well, why king h1? Well, it unpins usefully against bishop h3. If uh, rook c1... Maybe for bishop f1 use. Maybe this is a good idea with h3, just crashing through h3. And that's really uh, a dangerous position. That's going to be doing very well. So king h1, at least, well, unpinning the g pawn. Bishop g4. Queen d3. Queen d7. And this is absolutely a beautiful concept here. In this position. Really sublime so I've said before that sometimes giving up a bishop for a knight sometimes you get strength on the other squares actually it's more severe than that uh, in fact this knight is contributing to the bishop basically on the dark squares so e5 is a vulnerable point if black wants to reroute this bishop this becomes a vulnerable point because of that knight as well so the idea of giving up bishop for a knight in this instance seems to be really, really necessary to dissipate first the pressure on dark squares in order to intensify <clears throat> the pressure on dark squares. 
So the key move here is bishop takes f3. And I'll give you the concrete reasons for this. So giving up the light square bishop, we've seen in many, many leader game examples, that's a preliminary to really a strong attack on the other color complex. But here, uh, the idea now is after knight g5 is to reroute soon. But I have to take you to this position to show you that the idea is to reroute. And then to question with you, well, why couldn't we have rerouted without bishop takes f3? And the reason is if bishop d8, bang, knight takes e5, the knight is literally contributing to the dark square strategy of white. So this wouldn't be very good. This position, uh, you know, there's loads of pawns. White's got this central pawn mobility. So this is a really amazing preliminary, I find, to the dark square attack. Destroying white's pressure first on the dark squares. Then have the luxury of intensifying on the dark squares. Now, in this sequence, knight g5, this can't be taken as a rook h7, by the way, putting the queen. So we have this insertion of that forcing move. But now, another insertion here, but then the bishop rerouting. So I think that's a key strategic little plan that's just been played by Leela here. So, and also with the pressure on e4, another little nuance here is if white's greedy, then things like knight c5 and e4 collapses. So this bishop b6 is really facilitated here. White tries to strengthen e4, but it's too late. Now, the, the bishop can have b6 but first b6 is kind of uh, secured down with a takes b4 as well another little nuance because uh, potentially that's going to be annoying because the bishop hasn't got a retreat because the knight's on a7 so making b6 secure before making it a home for the bishop black's basically you can see what black's done black's really removed the pressure of white on the dark squares and got the bishop to a really fantastic place in the position. The King's Engine player's dream, this this diagonal, instead of being trapped in its dark square pawn chain, this bishop is perfectly liberated. Instead of being terribly locked in, it's actually perfectly liberated, this bishop. And that, that prelude, bishop takes f3, I find sublime uh, for what it represents. So rook g a1 is played. And now, uh, with the pressure on the dark squares covering an escape square of the white king, there's this a very nice attacking move, knight h3, threatening knight f2 check. If takes, then queen takes h3 is mating, mate, in fact. So this position, this is set up now, winning an exchange, which is really white's downfall, <laughs> being exchanged down. Bishop f1, knight f2 check. Uh, so that's winning the queen if if the king moves with check. So that has to be taken. So the exchange up now. Okay, the bishop returns here. Still torturing that diagonal. Queen e7 with the threat of checkmate. Bishop e1, pairing queen h4. Rook g3 is too dangerous to take there. We have bishop f2. So Stockfish is trying its resource, resourceful best to avoid getting mated. Bishop takes f2 and now putting pressure on the g file. Is this enough to win though, this exchange up position? Well, h4 betrays the idea of h3, which is strategically important to undermine this pawn chain. Rook b2, knight c7, not minding. Um, well, this is a bad place knight, and that was a, a relatively well placed knight. If the knight goes back, then still things like h3 and the knight might join the party later. So, Actually, white played knight takes c7. Uh, just to give a quick example, you can see the variations in detail in the pinned comment. But here, uh, if knight c3, h3, you can see that the knight might actually participate here uh, with the attack, like this, for example. Bang, knight takes h3, crushing, crushing. This possession has simplified the exchange uh, up, and it's just hopeless for blackness ending. The king could come over here. It's going to do damage. So um, knight takes c7, queen takes, and it looks as though maybe, maybe white's idea is a kind of fortress here. But Leela is having none of it and very quickly changes the whole picture here with h3. 
offering a pawn so white has got now a pawn for the exchange but there's a lot of pressure here queen h5 hitting f3 that's protected queen h4 threatening rook takes h3 winning the queen that's parried uh, just to put that on the board just to show here rook takes h3 jack queen takes f2 so stubborn defense at the moment rook c2 queen h5 toying around now here rook retreats now taking that c file probing circling around like a shark is is the game contributor talked about it in the legal forum Lila is like circling around its prey like a shark so here rook c7 is it gonna is the shark gonna take the c file now come down the c file that's parried rook c2 is parried for anything rook takes h3 again now look decision is this c file going to be used maybe maybe yes again again dun dun Dun, 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 dun. Okay, yeah, rook c2. <laughs> so the queens came off of rook c2. This position, it looks as though b4 is a liability. Uh, king g1, that's taken. Rook c4. This pawn's dropping off, and the rest is really, it's not too bad because look at this position. The bishop can't attack any of these pawns, they're all on dark squares. Well, apart from that one. So the king can probably just come in here. Let's see what happened. That pawn's taken. That pawn's protected. And moved up. Now to a dark square, the rook infiltration. It's just a matter of technique here. And now Lila starts to use the king a bit. Getting the king over. Uh, this is just hopeless. White just gives up, basically. The king's just going to come into the position in any case. So, But this is just totally hopeless now. The game continues to the death until the chat mate. Yep, Lena manages to play it all in time. Of course, yes, she uh, is actually pretty good in time pressure. Uh, so I thought that was a wonderful King's Indian defense. Uh, the bishop takes f3 really triggered being able to reroute the bishop. AB secured the bishop's home on b6. It's a wonderful example of rerouting a bishop, but first giving up the light square bishop to do that. And then the attack with knight h3, because the king's escape square was taken, knight h3 ended up winning a whole exchange here, and basically, ultimately, the game. But it all started with an amazing trigger move, bishop takes f3. Before that, though, there were also some really neat knight retreats to stabilize the position against things like knight sacks on e5 so there's a lot of interesting backward knight stabilization moves as well before that and the option of the g file not just to open it but to squish it was always there but white chose to give black g file pressure rather than being squished that was the lesser evil chosen by stockfish but it really didn't help matters so a nice attacking example in the king's engine defense i hope you enjoyed it comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much